Hi, it's time for another verb of the day. Today's verb is thread. And this is another great suggestion from one of our viewers. So thank you so much for your continued ideas. It makes it a lot more fun uh, to think about these verbs after hearing there's things you're interested in. Let's take a moment and now look at some of the definitions or the ways that we use this verb. For most people, when they think of this particular verb, they think of the action of sewing. So uh, in order uh, to begin the process of sewing, one must pass a small uh, piece of, of cotton or other fiber through the eye of a needle. You're going to notice in my first definition, it says here to pass a thread. And uh, you can already probably tell that thread can also be a noun. To better help us understand this first definition, I have a picture. So I'm going to direct you to the upper right hand corner of the screen. You can see a person's hand there with some kind of reddish oranges thread, right? And it's starting to be passed through the small opening or the eye of a needle. Now, a second and very much related way to use the verb thread is to mean to put something, again, on a, uh, a piece of fiber or maybe perhaps on a chain and uh, you're kind of passing those things through the, the fiber or the chain in order to connect things. Again, I know the wording of these definitions can be a little complex, so I have another picture. If you look down at the bottom here, you can see a woman who is passing or threading beads. Perhaps she's going to make a bracelet or a necklace, some other type of piece of jewelry, but you'll hear the verb used um, to, to describe that particular action of, of connecting those beads. A third way the verb thread gets used is to mean to pass something through in a way that is similar to these first two examples, the two things we've looked at. So sometimes uh, if you think back to uh, older film cameras, right, we might might have had to kind of push the thread or, or th pardon, pass the film through a certain part, like get it to pull around, we could use that verb to describe that particular action too. So you're threading the film through the camera or maybe through a microfiche uh, uh, type processor. Now we're going to move on and talk about some slightly different uh, ways to use this verb. The fourth way people use the verb thread is to mean to make one's way in a cautious way through some type of hazardous or dangerous situation. I see this verb uh, being used many times to talk about really difficult negotiations that are going on uh, between different parties within a government, right? And they're trying to be very cautious. There's some issue that's causing a, a great deal of, of disagreement uh, or even polarization, right? Where we have these different ones and they're kind of thinking about how they're going to uh, navigate this difficult situation. Uh, fifth way the verb thread gets used is uh, to talk about removing or plucking one's eyebrow hair. Um, there are a lot of different ways that people use uh, to, to remove the hair that grows here. Uh, some people use tweezers, right, a little metal or plastic tool. Sometimes people use wax. And I believe uh, this process of threading might have been started in India or Southeast Asia. But again, it's using those uh, sort of cotton or other fibers to remove the hair there. A sixth way thread gets used is to mean to form a screw, screw thread on or in something. So we might hear this uh, used in connection to bolts. For now, you should know that thread is a regular verb. To make the progressive form of this verb, all you need to do is add ing to form threading. 
The past tense and participle forms of this verb can be made by adding ed. Our base verb, thread, d, ends in a d sound. This means when we add the ed ending, we're going to make an id sound. And this is going to add an extra syllable to our verb. So the past tense and the participle forms of the verb should sound like this, threaded, threaded. Now, there are a couple phrasal verbs uh, with our verb thread, and we'll discuss and do a few examples of those. One phrasal verb you might encounter is to thread through. Uh, this can be used, again, uh, to talk about the process of sewing, of, of connecting or, or placing uh, a piece of fiber through a small opening, but it can be used really to talk about anything passing through some type of small opening, a, a small passage, or a small space. An example of this might be, can you thread the drawstring through the eyelet and all the way through the casing of the waistband? Now, this question might sound really complex, so I've got a picture to kind of help us understand this. If you look down at the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, you can see a woman in a sweatsuit. Right? And you might see these little strings uh, near her neck, uh, near that part of, of the shirt. Okay? Those strings right, are connected. They go all the way around. Right? Uh, and you might hear this called a drawstring. So it can be pulled tight uh, to close, maybe on, on something like this to, to keep something warm. In pants, it might help keep the pants up. Um, but for a lot of people, it's if this string comes out, oh, it can be really difficult to get it back through. So that's that idea. We're threading it through. There's a very small passage where this string uh, can, can run through and, and then be used to help close this garment or article of clothing. A second way thread through gets used is to mean to move through some place. And generally, it's going to be a place that has been crowded with people or with things. An example of this. The pickpocket threaded through the crowd and escaped. Okay. So here, maybe we're describing a person who's stealing, who's taking things from others, trying, trying to reach into pockets where people don't notice. You might hear that that uh, term used to describe really a thief, but it's it's someone who's stealing maybe wallets, phones, other things from one's pockets or from a purse. Okay. Uh, but here, right, maybe we're in a very busy, crowded city area, right? And this person is able to move through the space without others noticing or being caught. The last phrasal verb we'll discuss today is to thread with. The meaning here is to interweave something like it was a fiber, okay? So an example of this might be his dark beard is threaded with silver now, okay? So here, right, we're talking about facial hair, a beard, right? And somebody who normally has very dark colored hair there, now there's little bits of silver or gray hair growing, okay? Now let's move on and continue using our verb of the day in a couple different verb tenses. Today we're going to practice the past progressive and the present perfect progressive. Let's start with the past progressive. Many teachers, textbooks, and other YouTube videos call this the past continuous, and that's perfectly fine. Past progressive, past continuous, they mean exactly the same thing. We use the past progressive to talk about actions that were ongoing during a particular period of time. Sometimes in sentences, we will have one verb in the past progressive, so we know it was ongoing or it was continuing, and then it's interrupted by another action, and that interrupting action is most commonly in the simple past tense. The reason I like saying past progressive is I like to help my students remember how we build our verbs. So here we're going to need two parts to our verb. So past progressive has two letter P's. So we're going to need two parts to our verb. And this is a verb tense where we must pay attention to our subject. 
Okay? Because we're going to have our subject, we're going to use a past form of be, and then we're going to use the ing form of the verb. Now here, be has two forms in the past. If our subject is I, he, she, or it, I use was, and then the ing form. But if my subject is you, we, or they, I use were, w-e-r-e, -E, and then the ing form the verb. Let's take a look at an example. The pilot was threading the gap very finely between the airfields. Okay? This might tie back to that definition of meaning that someone is being very cautious in a dangerous situation. So maybe we're talking about a really narrow area where the pilot could navigate through. Now, if you want to make a negative sentence in the past progressive, again, pay attention to your subject. If the subject is I, you, we, or sorry, oh, I have a bad habit of doing this in my videos. <laughs> if your subject is I, he, she, or it, we're going to use was not or wasn't, and then the ing form of the verb. But if your subject is you, we, or they, you're going to use were not or weren't, and then the ing form of the verb. Here's another example. She wasn't threading the machine when the injury occurred. Okay, so here, maybe someone has hurt themselves while using a sewing machine. Okay? But we're describing what action was not continuing here. Finally, if you want to make a yes or no question in the past progressive, start with was or were. Then you're going to use your sub subject and then the ing form the verb. Here's another example. Were people threading the notebooks in a special way? So you can maybe imagine uh, pages being connected. Uh, again, it doesn't always have to be with like a cotton type fiber. It could be something else. Uh, I know my definitions use the example of a chain, uh, but, but something else that's going to secure them together. Now let's move on and talk about the present perfect progressive. It will not surprise you to know that the present perfect continuous is another name for this verb tense. And again, it means exactly the same thing. We use this verb tense to talk about actions that started in the past and continue into the present. They may even continue on into the future. The reason I like saying present perfect progressive is, again, we have three letter P's and this can help you remember that you're going to need three parts to make your verb. This is yet another verb tense where we must pay attention to our subject. If the subject is I, you, we, or they, we're going to use have, that's our first part, then the participle been, B-E-E-N, and then our third part is the ing form the verb. But if our subject is he, she, or it, we're going to use has been and the ing form the verb. Let's take a look at an example. Humans have been threading needles for thousands of years. Okay. Here, we're talking about the action of sewing. Um, I think uh, I was looking at this to make sure I, I make accurate examples. And I think there's evidence of, of needles existing 25,000 years ago. So uh, sewing is, is not something that is new or modern. Now let's talk about making negative present perfect progressive sentences to do this. Again, we pay attention to our subject. If the subject is I, you, we, or they, we're going to use have, not, or haven't, been, and the ing form the verb. If the subject is he, she, or it, we'll use has not, or hasn't, been, and then the ing form the verb. Here's another negative example. He hasn't been threading the rope through the pulley. Okay. Remember my earlier example about film and a camera? This would be a, a similar way of using. So we're, we're talking about directing a rope through some type of pulley mechanism. Uh, and kind of usually it's, it's through a small opening, a small space. Okay. Finally, let's talk about making yes or no questions in the present perfect progressive. To do this, you start with have or has, 
use the subject, right, that matches, and then use the participle been and the ing form the verb. Here's another example. Have you been threading eyebrows for very long? Okay. Might be a question you ask before you have this process done. Uh, I think of that many times uh, when I'm having a haircut or other things, right? I, I don't know that I want uh, somebody who is brand new at it, right? I don't know that I want to be someone's first client for eyebrow threading or eyebrow waxing or, or anything of that, right? like them to have a little bit of practice it. <laughs> now let's take a moment and look at some words that are related to our verb thread. Earlier in this video, I mentioned that thread with the exact same spelling and the exact same pronunciation can be a noun. This noun can have several different meanings. The first way the noun gets used is to refer to those long, thread, uh, thin strands pieces of, could be cotton, nylon, nylon, some other type of, of fiber that is most commonly used in sewing or weaving. So to, again, to help us with this, I've got a little picture on the screen. You can see uh, many different spools, right? Those are the, the, the sort of holders of the thread, right? And they're in all kinds of different colors, uh, some pinks, some blues and browns. I, I see a few yellows there. So a way you might hear this noun used in a sentence might be, do you have any black thread, right? So perhaps I need to sew a button on, right? And I want it uh, to, to match the others. Now, a second way the noun thread gets used is where there is a theme or characteristic that forms um, and perhaps a uh, continuing situation or maybe several pieces of writing. So you might hear thread used if you're taking a reading class, a literature class, right? And a teacher, an instructor might say something like, did you see any common threads in the stories? Are there certain um, lessons or themes that are being taught? Are there certain characteristics that are very similar? A third way, and a certainly more modern way thread gets used, is in connection to social media posts. So uh, a sequence of linked posts, posts or messages are sometimes referred to as a thread. Um, this also gets used in online classes. If you're using a learning platform, uh, something like Blackboard uh, as an example. So uh, an example of this noun in a sentence might be, how many discussion board threads have you contributed to? Right. So not just how many times have you posted, but how many sort of different questions or different topics have you engaged in conversation with? Uh, last way you might hear the noun thread used is a uh, slang for clothes. And here it's usually going to be used in the plural, right? So someone might say something like nice threads or those are some cool new threads, right? And they're talking about your clothes. Now I have a couple phrases I thought that perhaps you've seen or heard others use, so we'll talk about those. The first phrase you might encounter is to hang by a thread. Okay? This means that someone or something is in a very precarious or dangerous state. Uh, could also be a, a dangerous situation. An example of this, no, negotiations are hanging by a thread. So here, uh, maybe we have two sides. They can't seem to find common ground. So the negotiations are very close to just ending, completely stopping here. Um, that's, that, that's what we mean. It's they're in kind of a dangerous or precarious state. Another phrase you might encounter is to thread the needle. Now, this can go back to the action of sewing. It can have that literal meaning of, of pushing the strand of cotton or other fiber through the eye of a needle. But many times it's used to describe someone or some group who is skillfully navigating some difficult conflict. An example of this might be sustainable green growth must 
thread the needle of improving a country's economy and national security. So the sentence is suggesting, right, it's not, uh, we can't just think about like, oh, what's good for the environment? Because sometimes people feel real economic impact impacts from it that might in, uh, affect a country's national security. So we have to kind of carefully navigate these situations to find solutions that will do sort of all th three things, be good for our environment, protect our economies, and keep us safe. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you have a great day.